you very much. I'm going to try to be brief, but that's quite a challenge. <laughs> um, it's interesting, isn't it, to listen to, into all these conversations going around the room and wonder how did we get here. Uh, and it's quite quite a, a long journey. And I think it's really important to recognise that you know this that we have was not invented on the basis of some kind of research findings and then just implemented. It has grown over time, you know, trial and error, adjustment and so forth, and people working together to make it what it is. So I'm going to try to give something of a brief explanation of, of that. Um, this, um, oh, it's not on, hang on. This image here um, is something that Paul and I picked up in Copenhagen at one of our uh, international events, and, and it reminds us about the importance of looking back in order to look forward. So I want to include that. It's something that's dear to my heart. Um, my work on the sort of thing that we've been talking about today began with a critical conversation with this man, Jim Nixon. Uh, I was privileged to speak to him again recently. Uh, he and I worked very closely together in 1989. And he was a student on a diploma course, and I was working in the university in Canterbury. He came to see me. And he said, I'm so sorry, I haven't been able to write my essay about appraisal because I've been so busy organising our first ever school-based professional development event. It's a real big thing for us. And I said, isn't that weird that you're writing about this thing when you're really concerned about that thing? And we began to talk about that problem. And we talked and talked and talked over many, many weeks. And we ended up setting up a school-based diploma programme and 17 of his colleagues joined it. We then built onto that a master's degree program, went through a validation, like we've done with HeartScan and so on. So Jim and I did some good work then, and uh, Judy Durant, who's with us tonight, uh, joined us in that enterprise. And, and it was 10 years of really interesting development. Um, so that, for me, that was a very critical uh, point. It led to a whole network of schools. Um, it led to a, a methodology, if you like. Um, and. Uh, it's from the basis of what I was able then to do, or to bring, uh, to Hertfordshire. That was the, the book that I felt very clever about. I thought, this is a really <laughs> smart thing to do. But actually, I'm not so sure it was. Um, and it coincided with my moving to Cambridge. And I, I went with this book, as it were, to say, look, here's a guide to how to do this sort of thing. Foolish enterprise, really, because as we know, these things change every, every year. But going to Cambridge uh, in, in the late 90s, was an interesting challenge. I mean, I was surprised to be nudged to apply for a job in Cambridge. And when I got there, uh, it was really very difficult. I became a diabetic in the same year I started at Cambridge. Handling that illness was, was you know, really challenging. I was also totally de-skilled. I'd become, you know, quite effective in Kent, working with Judy and other colleagues down there. And then I was in Cambridge, surrounded by the likes of David Hargreaves and, and so forth. And, feeling a bit like a fish out of water, you know. Um, and, and there was this factionalism which I barely understood. I was employed at Cambridge because I was seen to be an alternative to a whole clique of people who had already got everything sewn up. So I was in fact called in to, to, as an alternative to David Hargreaves and Dave Hopkins and all these people, which is very strange. So we had two things going. I was trying to build the partnership at Hertfordshire. I was told, that's your job. Go talk to Hertfordshire, try to build something. Um, and and the, the Hescam project, that was with the Hertfordshire Education Service or something, I think it was called. And, and there was also a Chesham School, Kathy's here. Kathy and I worked together there. She was a participant in a program at that school. Um, that was my attempt, but David Hargreaves was also talking to the Director of Education about an M. Ed, a bespoke M. Ed for Hertfordshire. And the Learning Partnership. The, the, the naughty boys and girls club for the schools that weren't up to target. So, uh, some people in this audience will remember that experience. Very <laughs> well. Yes. So it was interesting that we had these two totally different things going, and and I I took seriously that challenge to go and form a partnership. And in fact, I'm, I'm a bit like that um, Japanese soldier they found hiding in a tree in the Borneo jungle in 1959. You know, nobody told them the war was finished. <laughs> Nobody's ever rescinded that challenge to go to Hertfordshire. I'm still there. I retired two and a half years ago, but I'm still there. Um, time went on. I, I did eventually um, uh, manage to get this book uh, published. Judy and I worked on that. Uh, it was it was uh, based on our, our work in Kent. Uh, with colleagues there, and that year I also joined Wolfson College, or I was joined. I, it was never my idea. They, I kind of snuck up on me and 
and they decided that in the future all Hearts MED people should belong here and, and they better put in somebody to keep an eye on them. So that, that was my job, to come here and, and be the person for, for Hertfordshire students. And it was also that year that really I ended up being the last man standing. The David Hargreaves, the Mary James, the Michael Fielding, all of these people buggered off. They just, <laughs> oh, I'm too busy with my research. I got lumbered with everything, the, the MED, the learning part, everything, which was all right, actually. I thought, yes, that's an opportunity for me. Uh, meanwhile, Julie and I continued our conversations. It was uh, amazing to think this was way after, I mean, six years after I left Kent, but I think our, our conversation continued, didn't it, Judy? We continued to think and present papers and, and so forth. Um, <laughs> sorry, Julie. Yes. And again, foolishly, I think, we published this, this book, which some people still look at, and I, I think, oh, no, no, don't do that. It's changed such a lot. It changes all the time. Um, but one of, one of the things that followed that was really interesting, was, and perhaps this is a reason to publish things, uh, Joe Miles uh, took the initiative and said, I've been reading your stuff, and actually I think we should do this in our schools. Come to Sir John Law, speak to my colleagues. I think we could do something with this. I, think, I hope I remember that roughly right. Um, but that's where the TLDW programme started, because of Joe's sense that this is what we needed to do. Um, and of course what Joe brought to that piece, I think, was a real understanding about the role of senior leadership and how they had to work with something like the TLDW programme. And Joe, of course, was, was having very rich conversations with her colleagues on the senior leadership team. At the same time, impact education consultants, Amanda and Judith, were, were also using their work with the LEA uh, to use the TLDW programme to support schools. And eventually, we really began to embrace this rhetoric about teacher leadership. It's interesting, we had the woman from America at our annual conference just a, a week or so ago. Uh, that's what we were linking up to, the fact that there is a global discussion about teacher leadership. And actually, that is what we're doing. So let's join in that debate, but maybe try to shift it a bit. We consolidated our work uh, with, with the networking. Paul was very instrumental. Paul Barnett was instrumental with that, I remember. Just, just saying when we tried a, a kind of networking activity, this isn't working, we've got to do something different. And we really sat down and thought about it and came up with something else. The MED team grew because of all these people who were not available at Cambridge. And we said, well, we, we're going to run this. So you know, we began to rope people in. You, Amanda you know, became a part of that team at one point. Sarah Lightfoot joined in 2004 and so on. Recruiting people who were teachers uh, was really an important step for us. And then, of course, getting organized and, and badging the whole thing. And, um, you know, again, we drew, we drew upon help from impact education consultants to help us get organized. Uh, and we, we ended up with that logo. Similarly, we, we consolidated the tools uh, that they were never, in the first place, organized as a series of sessions in the way that facilitators now recognize them. Uh, but these sort of things that, you know, a lot of you in the room will recognize. Uh, but we got them really well organized. And, now, of course, we see them popping up in funny languages, like, what's this? is this Russian Gomera or is this Kazakh? I can't remember. Russian, Russian. Yes, I've seen them in Arabic and Turkish and all sorts. It's true. And it's, it, these kind of collections of tools have gone through all sorts of different iterations. 2007, notice the different badging. It shifts nicely from the <laughs> University of Cambridge to, to Hearts Camp. Uh, and that was the 2010 version. And the 2013 version. Um, so getting that organized was really important, I think. And here's another, I think, a big step in 2006, launching the journal, the Teacher Leadership Journal, uh, where we were refocused on enabling people's voices to be heard, their stories to be told. Uh, and we've built on that, of course, with other publications. And then, of course, we start to get interest from abroad. Uh, 2008, uh, we had a lot of interest from, from these countries and more besides. And we thought, actually, we should try to launch something uh, under this banner, as it were. So the ITL project was, was invented. Gordana came to see it. It's a really very significant step. We, we threw together a meeting in Cambridge. Uh, we didn't have any funding, no money, but we just kind of, I don't know, lost the paperwork and the bills went somewhere, you know, we managed. And then Gordana showed up from Open Society Foundation and said, this sounds interesting. This may be useful for us in the Balkans. And there, that really led to a, an amazing... Uh, initiative to, to go and meet people uh, in Belgrade. 
that was a document. We documented everything we did. We wanted to tell the story. Uh, we were exploring in workshop style with our colleagues from different countries. What is teacher leadership? What's the potential of that? Here's a picture of Joe leading a workshop in Corinth, which was early in 2009. A wonderful occasion. Val was there. Paul was there. can't remember who else, but it was a really great occasion. Um, oh, there's Val. She had her hair cut in those days. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting that, that you know, to see people like Val and, and Joe and people like that leading these things. There's professors, it, you know, as participants in those conferences, being led by teachers. That was quite a, a change, you know, it was really very exciting. Uh, and then, of course, we went on to the significant meeting in Belgrade, which Gordana had brought all her networks to bear. The Bulgarians turned up and we even met people from Kosovo and Albania and all sorts, of, you know, and so on. So that was, that was truly wonderful. We ended up with about 15 countries involved um, with a little bit of money. And we talked about this key concept, extended professionality. We talked about that in Belgrade in 2009 and went on to do further work on that. There were all sorts of funny spin-ups. For example, Sheila and I have great memories of going to Macedonia to work with the entire National Educational Advisory Service. Uh, and we did workshops with them over two days in several languages at once, didn't we, Sheila? That was mind-boggling to have a translator who was translating in both Albanian and whatever they speak in Macedonia. The kind of, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely amazing. 2011 was a very significant year. We published a, a lot of bits and pieces, a report on the ITL project, but also John Bangs from the, the NUT, he retired from that, and we worked together on this report for Education International, got to know them rather well. Viv Waring, who was supposed to be here but hasn't made it, uh, did, did an evaluation report. Uh, she, she also graduated in the same year. That was nice. And then, most significantly, we began to flex our muscles uh, and became independent from Cambridge. Um, we learned something on, on these trips, these ITL trips. And this is a shot of, I see Tracy and Alice in the what, what is today? That's in the Sarajevo in Bosnia. And we'd gone to visit at schools in Mostar, which is a very difficult place to work. Really exciting. But the one thing that we learned from this was that actually they don't have the power to have a university issue certificates. And we said to them, certificate is really helpful. And they said, well, we can't possibly do that. You people at Cambridge, you're really lucky. But we came away from that saying, actually, if we can help them do it, maybe we could do it for ourselves. And so, you know, we decided we could do our own certificate. We don't need Cambridge anymore. It didn't help, of course, that the head of faculty at the time was trying to jack the prices up and make us all learn statistics. So we became a charity. We set out on our own, uh, an independent organisation. Um, and then, uh, you know, we had the final crunch time was when the people at the university started telling us that we couldn't uh, allow mere teachers to teach on the master's program. We went to, a, who was there, Val, you were there, we were at that conference, do you remember, somewhere? And I was explaining to this academic person that we're here to talk about this master's program led by teachers, and he literally said those words. What on earth qualifies them to teach on a master's program? And we watched this guy deliver a keynote the next day. It was the most appalling piece of rubbish you ever heard. He couldn't do anything. He was just incompetent. And I thought, let's learn from that. <laughs> anyway, we really seized the initiative and we found a good partner in the University of Hertfordshire. And we went on to get our own master's programme going. And these 16 people, some of whom are here tonight, they're wonderful, courageous pioneers. So to trust us and say, well, oh, it sounds good. <laughs> let's give it a go. Uh, and of course, it was very successful. Uh, they all graduated, every, every one of them. 16 started, 16 finished. And we had a great graduation in 2017. Uh, and we produced the book, Teachers as Agents of Change. Wonderful accounts. I mean, there are people all over the world reading those accounts. Um, and that just, you know, the latest in a series of books. You know this one uh, perfectly well. It's on, on the desk. Uh, it's, it's been translated into Serbian and Russian. Um, the, the blue one, uh, you, you've seen that as well. That, that's been translated into Arabic uh, and Serbian. Gordana, thank you so much for your translation. Marvellous job. Uh, the ITL work continues. Uh, in 2015, there's Amina El Tamami, one of our, my PhD students, doing it in. Uh, and, you know, in Lisbon even, that's relatively recently, three years ago, uh, a group of us went to Lisbon to, to revive 
the, the teacher leadership program there. And finally, we arrive at Gulmira's spot. <coughs> Pity your mum's not here, Gulmira. I would have liked to have told her this little place. But in my view, that Gulmira is, is just an amazing hero. She's, she's a national hero for Kazakhstan, I think, but she's an amazing advocate for, for Hearts Camp. And she's managed to recruit schools in four districts in Kazakhstan. And over the next three years, we're going for the entire country. Uh, and and Gormira's leadership is going to be so important. She's done it in, in, in her home city of Taras. Uh, colleagues here, Sheila, Paul, and others were, have been involved in visiting Kokshatau, where we did another little experiment. But now we're going for the whole country. So it really is incredible. And thank you, Gormira, for, for taking the torch to, to, that, to that level. That is really quite amazing. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you.